Hey everyone, Declan here from Flight Club again. In this short video, I'm going to do a quick run through of the live streaming features offered by Flight Club. These features are most useful for anybody who wants to host their own streams of rocket launches and wants to have some cool data visualizations on screen during launch, especially for visualizing data that isn't shown by the launch service provider. Of course, most providers nowadays do show some very basic data on their own webcasts like altitude and velocity, and in ULA's case we even get downrange distance, which is great. But sometimes we as Rocket fans just want more. So let's take a dive into Flight Club's live streaming features and see what other data we can offer to viewers. So from Flight Club's homepage, we can access the live streaming dashboard by going to data viz and then clicking on live streaming. This opens up a page with a few buttons on it that allow you to choose which launches you want to unlock or if you want to subscribe to unlock all launches happening in a month. Subscribing costs the same as two launches per month, so depending on how often you think you'll use these visualizations, you might choose a different option. Down the page we can see a list of upcoming launches with buttons to unlock data visualizations for each one. You can see that each launch has two buttons next to it. One is for unlocking some basic Flight Club themed data widgets and the other is for unlocking premium widgets. In this case, I've set up some premium widgets with a NASA spaceflight theme, just for illustrative purposes, and we'll see how these look shortly. Uh, before starting this video, I unlocked the live streaming tools for Starlink Group 4 Launch 6, and as you can see, we now have a gold button here, which allows us to view the dashboard for this particular launch. When we click here, we're taken to a new page with a rundown of the launch details, info on the rocket and the payload, and a huge amount of user controls. So let's take a look at all of these controls now. First up, we have here a countdown clock and the launch time, along with an input field and some buttons. I'll show these controls in action soon, but for now, all you need to know is that they help you to synchronize the Flight Club data with the launch service provider's live stream, which always has some delay in it compared to the official launch time. As I say, we'll come back to these controls shortly to show what they all do. Down here, we have a drop-down menu where we can choose which brand we want to apply to the data visualization widgets. This is only available if you unlock the premium level widgets, and then you can choose between premium and basic. If you've only unlocked basic, well then, this menu isn't shown, and all the widgets will be basic. So first up in our list, we have a cool little altitude velocity readout. This is available for all stages in a launch. Since this particular launch is a Falcon 9 launch, we just have two stages, stage one and stage two. So first we choose the units we want to display the data in, let's say altitude in miles and velocity in miles per hour. Clicking on one of these buttons will copy a URL into your clipboard, which, when opened in a new tab, displays the widget. Check it out. Finally, if we choose the NASA Spaceflight brand, then it will load up a separate widget which has been built specifically for this brand. We can do this exact same process for all of the other widgets, like a vehicle schematic with propellant levels for each tank. This one also shows stage separation and fairing separation animations. The active engines widget shows the engine layout for the chosen stage, and it shows which engines are firing and which ones aren't. This one is pretty cool to have for Falcon 9 or Starship launches, where not all engines are firing at the same time. Then we have three speedometer style widgets, which show velocity, acceleration and throttle. Again, we can choose our units here, and the premium widgets can look completely different. Uh, it all depends on what you, the client, want it to look like. Also, these ones aren't uh, restricted to velocity, acceleration and throttle. In theory, the speedometer style widget can show any quantity, sky's the limit. Okay, so I've set up a bunch of live stream widgets in a grid here so that you can see them all simultaneously. I also have a SpaceX uh, live stream down in the bottom right corner, and I have loaded up the uh, dashboard for these uh, widgets in the top right. As you can see, the counting clock for uh, Flight Club and for the YouTube live stream is not at all uh, lined up. In real life you might have a two or three second delay um, due to latency in the live stream. Uh, in this case 
the launch is from the past, from last week, and I've just loaded it up now, so the clocks are completely different. What I can do is I can click this button here, set clock to T0 now, and that will start all of the data as though launch has just happened. So if you're coming along, you can see that the propellant levels are dropping, velocity is going up. If you're coming along at T0 now, you can just click it, and you don't have to worry about anything. It just starts all of the data widgets at the moment of launch. As you can see, the countdown clock is now counting up at 12, 13, 14 seconds. It's synced with the YouTube video. Um, and that's it. That's the easy version. Now you can see this manual T0 offset field now has a value. This is the amount of seconds uh, of an offset I had to add to the countdown clock to make it line up with the YouTube video. Uh, when you click that set clock to T0 now, that it figures it out for you and it applies that value automatically. Uh, of course, you can control this number manually. Uh, you can change that number and then use the goal button to the side to set a manual offset. Uh, you can use this to um, line the clock up before launch happens so that it's already done and you don't need to worry about, setting, cl about clicking the button at T0. So here we have it set back to zero, uh, which so you can see it's counting down to a launch uh, in four days. If I click set clock to T0 now, it puts it to zero. I'm going to set to T0 at exactly 1.20. There we go so that I know that my clock is exactly 80 seconds wrong versus the YouTube clock. So now I can add 80 seconds to the manual T0 offset. So I'll set it to 371245. And I'll set that manually. And as you can see now, it is synced up again perfectly with the YouTube clock. So you can set it manually. You can set it at the moment of launch. Uh, and you can reset it back to zero. You can do whatever you want with that um, to try and make your Flight Club data visualizations synchronize perfectly with the YouTube um, live stream. Now, as you can see, we're coming up on Miko shortly, it usually happens around two minutes and 30 seconds for these Starlink launches. So let's hang around here. Um, we'll see if we'll see how well the data lines up. Uh, it might not line up perfectly as these are uh, for two separate launches. One is in the future. The, the Flight Club data visualizations are for a launch in the future, whereas the YouTube video is for a launch from last week, but it should be close enough. There's Miko. You see the engines turning off there. Acceleration drops to zero. There's a separation animation in the vehicle schematic. Happened about a second earlier than the YouTube webcast. Um, stage one, stage two is starting up. Excuse me, um, I don't have a stage two engines widget here. Uh, it is available, I just didn't include it because I haven't got space. You can see the stage two propellant levels are slowly dropping. Stage one altitude is still going up, but the velocity is dropping. Again, you could show a stage two altitude velocity readout, in which case you'd see the velocity rising. Uh, but there you go. That is a walkthrough of uh, a bunch of the widgets, the time controls, how to use them, how to synchronize them. Uh, and what they look like.